no good at taking good advice And I'm self-careless, so don't tell me twice That lately I've been so stuck in my head That I forget just about everything my therapist said Maybe I'm self-helpless Maybe I'm self-helpless Maybe I'm self-helpless Maybe we are all self-helpless Hey everyone, welcome to Self Helpless. I'm Delaney Fisher and today I'm chatting with Renee Ash who was on the reality TV show called Love Undercover which is on Peacock. Incredibly well done show, highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. It's about these five international men who come to America looking for love and the big reveal to all the ladies uh, that they dated uh, towards the end of the show is that they are very famous wealthy international soccer players. And they wanted to date people who didn't know who they were and knew nothing about, you know, their status, fame, money, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, check it out. And if you know anything about me, then you know I got hooked on reality TV at the beginning of COVID times. I had never watched reality TV before this point in my life. And a lot of people are surprised that I watch uh, a lot of reality TV due to my overall mother nature vibe, I guess. Uh, but yes, you guys, I love it. I really do love it so much. Uh, my husband is actually the one who turned me on to reality TV because my sister-in-law had mentioned to him that I might enjoy a little something called Love Island back in the day. So he put it on for me one day and the rest is history. And it just became my go-to escape during the pandemic. And then it just stuck. Does anybody else enjoy having Love Island on in the background? Because it feels like you're outside hanging out by a pool, even when you're not. Okay. So I've been wanting to talk with the reality TV star to learn about how it all works behind the scenes, you know, as a whole, like how much are the producers in your ears versus they let you kind of do whatever you want to do, you know, that type of stuff. I'm just curious about the process. And then also just very interested in hearing about someone's personal experience being on a show like this and the visibility, online criticism, all the stuff that can come with it. So Renee shares about all of that with us and lots more, including her experience with two public breakups. I mean, her most recent one being with Jamie, who she met on the show, and really the shock and heartbreak for her that followed. I also asked her if her or her other castmates read like the mean stuff people say about them online, whether it's, you know, social media or Reddit or whatever. And she actually told me about a time that her and her castmates all got together and read all the mean shit people write about them. Uh, so yeah, that was a, a pretty funny moment she shared as well. I also asked her if she thinks there's enough mental health support for people on reality shows and what she's learned about herself through this experience, including the areas that she wants to work on for herself um, and also for her next relationship. So look, whether you're a reality TV fan or maybe you're going through a breakup or you're experiencing some criticism or exposure in your life that you're not feeling great about, there's a lot in this episode that will be helpful and fun for you. So here is my chat with Renee. I was hooked from episode one, big fan of reality TV. <laughs> Love no, it. I don't even watch reality TV, like, unless I'm on it. <laughs> but um, the second I saw it, I was absolutely hooked. Just is a testament to how well the editing and everything was done. That was actually a question I was going to ask you is, did you watch the show? Because some people like to watch themselves, some people don't. But you ended up watching the whole series, right? Oh, I probably watched it a total of four times because, like, my friends would want to watch it with me. And then my grandma, who's on it, wanted to watch it with me. And then my mom wants to watch it with me. <laughs> totally makes sense. And just to preface this conversation, I'm sure you had to sign an NDA. So, of course, whatever you're comfortable sharing today, whatever you're able to share, I totally understand if some things are off limits. Why don't we just start with a little snapshot, if you don't mind, of what was life like before you went on the show What's life like now for you? What's different? What's similar, if anything? Whatever you want to share. I had gotten out of a really toxic relationship and kind of restarting my life like in my career because prior to this relationship, I was working corporate and fashion. Office life isn't really for me. After this relationship, I was like, okay, I kind of got thrown into social media. Like, let me take it seriously. And I think like two months later, 
I started casting. My casting was really like rapid and fast paced. And so mm. cast it for like the month of May and then started filming like the beginning of June. Oh, wow. And then after the show, I'd say life is kind of the same in the sense of like social media. And, you know, I have a little bit more exposure now. Obviously, it didn't work out uh, with Jamie right. in the show, who was my my partner who I moved in with in England. Um, and so it took a while to get over that and like heal from that. And, you know, I've been dating here and there, but I really... Jamie was like a very good lesson, like final lesson of like what I will and won't tolerate. Mm -hmm. And so still looking for love, ready to do another show. Like that is when I'm in my element and I feel like the most me and alive when there's yeah. a giant camera in my face. And so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exciting that you got the opportunity. Like you were excited about being on a show. You got that opportunity and it sounds like you thrived in that environment. That's nice that you kind of found that sweet spot and then you're doing social media too. So that kind of aligns for, were you excited to do this show? I mean, finding love is also awesome, but were you also excited for your career of like, wow, more people are going to know who I am and this will probably, you know, help the following and stuff like that. Was that part of it too? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So I also looked at it as the way I went into it was, okay this sounds great. Like I've always wanted to try reality show international yeah. men sign me up. <laughs> uh, my, my mindset going in was, you know, I don't necessarily think that I'm going to fall in love, but let's just see what happens. I'll go date these guys. I'm going to make some girlfriends. I'm just going to have so much fun and like let go of life during that time. And right. I think that's what made it really special. And I think you always fall in love when you don't expect it. Because right. I went in there like, I genuinely don't don't expect to fall in love at all. Right. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like just a fun opportunity all around. Um, yeah. I would, I'd imagine being visible in this, this way definitely came with some challenges. Did this experience bring up or amplify any insecurities for you that you had? What was that like? Just that kind of exposure? Um, so I've been through the ringer uh publicly around the world before so I was prepared I've been through it before and I, like you can't say much to hurt me and before the show like officially aired I spoke to a therapist about like hate is gonna come and let's notice when it affects you in your gut and when you don't care mm -hmm. and when you don't care that's not an insecurity that you have and when it affects you in your gut that's something to work on and so this time around, people got to really know me for me, rather than like a false twisted, I would say narrative that has been out there about me before. Mm -hmm. And at first, a lot of people, my favorite, favorite DM or comment is I hated you at first. And then I saw how genuine you are. And I loved you and what a girl's girl you are. So, you know, for a few years now, there's been so many comments about like, how I'm lying about my age and how old I look. And that's just like not an insecurity of mine. So it doesn't affect me. Right. And you know, I've been hurt so much. You got to really do a lot for me to be hurt over a dumb comment. Is there anything that was, you know, said because of your visibility, whether with the show or previously, that did kind of hit you, like you said, that you kind of felt in your gut, this really is hitting on an insecurity. What what was that if you can share? And like, how did you approach that? I would say that two things. Um, people bringing up my past relationship and judging it, sticking with that false narrative. Mm -hmm. And basically judging my past relationship, not knowing the truth about it, um, because people don't believe that I was with this person out of love. And so I wouldn't put myself through so much trauma if, if I didn't love the guy. Yeah, And so that was one of them. And then just personally watching the show back and watching how happy and how in love I was and just like from a bird's eye view, like seeing yourself so happy and so in love, knowing how it ended up the last few episodes really got me I was like, not in a great place. Totally makes sense. I mean, now that you've been through an experience like this, do you think there was enough 
transparency going into it of the possibilities of the impact of, you know, negative comments or online criticism, maybe even for your castmates that hadn't been in a public relationship or anything like that before. Basically, do you think there's an, enough talk of mental health or mental health resources for reality TV stars? No, I think that is a new conversation. You know, on so many other shows, they've outed how they've been treated. And yeah. I think that started the conversation. And I think that networks are really doing, from what I know, a much better job at taking care of their cast. Um, I have no complaints on my side. Yeah. Um, if something were to happen, I would bring it up to have a conversation about it. But yeah. I did warn my castmates, I'm like, get ready, because you're about to get no matter what, you're going to get some hate. And there was a week where everybody was in town for the cast party. And we sat on Reddit together. Oh, wow. Reading everything we were saying about us. You are brave. Oh, my gosh. I would never do it on my own. But like, when we were together, (laughs) it was just we were like, belly laughing to the point we were getting abs like <laughs> these comments are so ridiculous yeah they would continue to read it on their own and I'm like get off of reddit that's the worst thing you could do to yourself yeah. and then there have just been like middle-aged women who come after me for lying about my age and my mom will take care of them so like it's if so any weird. if anybody needs to take care of my mom comes in I love it I have to stop I, her sometimes I'm like oh. don't give them attention <laughs> Right, exactly. That's what they're begging for. Exactly. Yeah, I I was always wondering, like, you know, for somebody who's never had that kind of a visibility to kind of overnight have that when you leave a show, that must be a really jarring experience for a lot of people. And I always wondered, is there any kind of support for the like post show of what it's like to deal with online trolls and all this criticism? And so it is interesting that, you know, you've gone through that experience. The great thing about our show is we were provided a therapist and so we could talk to her as much as we wanted during the show and then we had that schedule of appointments if you wanted to take them after once it aired oh I took full advantage just to make sure that like if anything were to come up like let's work through it oh I love the show even more now hearing that um yeah yeah so you mentioned like getting with your friends or your castmates and, and reading Reddit and laughing your asses off, right? Did anything else help with the online criticism? Maybe when you were even brand new to it, did you look at stuff? Did you not look at stuff? Did you have any kind of like hot tips or hacks for yourself? Hot tip, don't read the comments. Yeah. Um, sometimes you get a little bit, like you're just get a little bit curious right. and you sure. can help but see some of them, but you know. For me, I I always say I never asked to be this strong because I've been bullied as like a teenager. I've gone through like friend breakups. And I've been through horrific relationships, which is why I say I never asked to be the strong because every time it makes you stronger. And so for me, it's just like life has kind of prepared me for it. And I honestly surprised myself with what thick skin I have. But I think like the girls that I stayed close with have like been able to take it as a joke. Um, But I would say it is not for the week. Yeah, absolutely. Putting yourself out there publicly, it is not for the week. Like I simply posted an Instagram reel recently. It was with my like nephew who's a baby. And I just said like POV, we have to discuss what it's going to be like for me to be your aunt. And somebody came in to comment, can be, can POV expire? So they'll yeah. always find anything. Like if you put yourself out there, <laughs> like, are, like yeah. it is you're really adding weird. engagement to my page. So like go off. Like I know that's what, that is what's so funny is like the, the critical comments are actually like helping the algorithm somehow. So like, they're not, they're not doing what they're wanting to do, which is bring somebody down. They're getting them more visible, but I've had to deal with weird comments, online criticism. I'm like, I'm not a famous person. Why are you bothering me? <laughs> Like, I'm just a girl who's trying to do a podcast, you know? Just a girl. I'm (laughs) just a girl trying to tell a podcast that I love them. Um, I know. Anytime somebody feels threatened by, like, something you do that they want to do but don't have the confidence to do so, or, like, just simply having the confidence to put yourself out there, there's going to be people that are going to come at you. Right. And you just have to, if you want that life, you just kind of have to accept that. Yeah, for me, like, like you were saying, if somebody says something, and it just doesn't even register, it's kind of laughable. 
then it doesn't bother me. But if somebody says something that kind of hits an insecurity, I've been able to kind of channel that into the, the podcast. I might talk about that a little bit more because they're obviously they're helping something. you out. You're giving me great content ideas. I appreciate it. Um, so you've kind of talked about that. You appreciated the editing and stuff from, from the show. Were there any editing choices that were made that you felt misrepresented you or a certain situation? Or do you think that production did a pretty good job, like with an honest depiction of things? I'll just speak for myself. Yeah. Um, they did an absolutely great job. You know, yeah. of course, there are some, they can't put everything in there. So there's like some pieces that are missing. For example, like when Jamie made a really gross comment about like spending money on me, people also came after me with like, that was so gross when she asked what he's going to buy her. Meanwhile, behind the scenes on camera, he gave me his card and was like, go treat yourself to something. So, oh, yeah. you know, but like, I think they did a great job. They did a very um, accurate depiction of like my love story. Um, the only thing I wish was in there more were like our really funny moments. Me and him would just talk shit to each other nonstop yeah. and like would just be like dying laughing. And I wish more of that went into it. Oh, it's interesting. You know, some things are like a little enhanced some things are like a little twisted but that's any show they're absolutely. making great TV. absolutely and I think people just need to remember that when they're watching a reality show that there's going to be bits and pieces missing from every conversation and sometimes you can't take certain things at face value so as long as that becomes more like general knowledge I think everybody can you know watch these things and not get so like pissed off about certain and also stuff. the fact that I would do it again and again and again would I have liked to see a little bit more of myself? Yes. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Maybe you could have a cameo on season two. Who knows? <laughs> Hopefully some things are in the works that I can't talk about. But like, I love it. Hopefully okay. everybody will be seeing my face again pretty soon. Oh, very nice. Was there anything that surprised you when the show did come out that you maybe didn't know about? Maybe that even happened with some of your friends on the show? I loved watching all of Marco's moments because like he was so quiet in the house, but in his interviews and in his confessionals, oh my God, he is my favorite character on the show. <laughs> he is so funny without trying. Yeah, I'm little things that I said that like maybe I in the moment was just like popping off on camera. And then I was like, oh no, I said that. Do they try to like, you know, feed you some liquor and stuff and then take you over for like confessionals no. or no? Are they like strict about they want the you, alcohol? I mean, yes, they want you <laughs> on your like, uh, they want you to get a little lit. So you sure. like say <laughs> right. some crazy stuff, but there is an alcohol limit. They don't want it to get like out of hand. It would just turn into like bad girls club if it was like endless yeah, alcohol. That makes sense. So just buzzed enough to tell the truth, but not to the truth. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I get it. Um, so during filming, did you ever think there was a twist about these men? I know that there were some kind of conversations here and there um, between the the women, like, what if they ended up being really famous or wealthy or something? They're, they're lying about their jobs. Did you ever think that for yourself? Um, or did you like, no, these are just international dudes looking for a as girlfriend? As much as I would like to say I was investigative and <laughs> and was really figuring it out. No. A few of us were told that these were top-notch guys and like really wealthy, successful. Mm -hmm. And so we came in there like, what are these jobs? Nothing was adding up and we could not figure out why. It's just not adding up. I just think there's no plot to the show. <laughs> I genuinely would sit there and be like, you guys, wait, what's the plot? <laughs> like, hey. we're just hanging out with these guys going on days. Like, I think it's just gonna be a boring show jokes on me that's so interesting that they said hey they're they're wealthy they're successful I would think if I was a participant like oh my gosh I bet the twist is that they're they're not very wealthy and then at the end you're like is it for love or money oh, kind of a thing so interesting. it was plot twist yeah. after plot twist so that's how they kind of got things by this is making sense now genius and yeah. on top of that the amount of work that it probably took to make sure that we don't find out anything. Right. I can't even imagine. That is wild. Um, there was there was a part in the show where um, the guy that you dated, Jamie, was they, he was getting kind of upset that people were not picking him for dates and stuff. And then the next two girls 
picked him for a date, right? And I'm thinking as a viewer, okay, that was the produ- that was the producer nudging these girls to pick him because he was kind of threatening to leave the show. So how much of that was going on where producers were giving a lot of direction versus letting you guys just, you know, do what you wanted? It was mostly us doing what we wanted. Okay. Like, you know, they might suggest, like, for example, also that scene of Jamie. You have <laughs> me <laughs> wanting you, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> No, they might suggest like you and Jamie have this really strong connection, but you guys haven't gotten any deeper. So let's have a deep conversation between you two. Oh, um, or like tonight, let's like stay in the house and do something fun. And I was like, pajama party, let's do it. And so like, I see. it was kind of like a conversation and just like suggested, suggested conversations for us to have suggested maybe like things for us to do to get closer or people keep asking if it's scripted or unscripted it is very unscripted cool to know that yeah it was just kind of like some suggestions no you seem to have like a really positive experience I mean with the crew anyway again we're not, not talking about Jamie quite yet but um so once you oh my moved- god that was an eye roll for for people listening on Spotify or wherever <laughs> <Apple Music. laughs> so once you moved into the house was it uncomfortable being filmed 24 7 I would imagine did it put you in your head about anything was that uncomfortable at all no you, nah. felt, you felt fine nah. that's good no, unfortunately it that's probably great. should have put me in my head a little bit more but no <laughs> the second I walked in and there was a camera on like my first scene and there was a camera on me I was like I I forgot they were there mm-hmm you know, obviously it didn't work out with Jamie go like kind of looking back. Is there anybody else that you would have really liked to get to know, um, on the show if you were not dating Jamie? I think looking back, I think Ryan is a slow burn and he's fantastic and like very much a man. And like, I think we all should have chose Marco, (laughs) but like the guys aren't so innocent. Sure. So you know, how do you feel about how your relationship with Jamie ended? What were your, what was your approach going into it after the show wrapped? There's a lot of talk about like our future together. Wow. And on and off camera. So once I moved in, there was talk about like me watching his kids when he has to work and, and what our life will look like moving in and FaceTiming with my mom and him being like, you got to move to London with us. Um, Yeah, no, it, it, seemed very real like I again another plot twist coming my way um we would talk about our future and like and families were involved and I would go see his family and I've met his kids and you know I think meeting the kids was like a very too fast um to do on camera it wasn't out like they didn't show that scene and I'm glad they didn't out of respect for his kids um from what I was being told by him, we had a future together. Even all production, all the crew execs, they were like, we are expecting a proposal very soon. We need our first love undercover baby. Wow. Um, yeah, everybody was like, oh, this is it. I would walk into rooms where he was talking about me in the sweetest way. So like, I just love her so much. I, as time went on of us spending time together off camera, energy started shifting and so I was like what's going on here and like I I have people in London I was introducing him to my friends in London and then you know I like I really even gave him the chance of having all these like allegations and I'll call it tricky past yeah with women because you know we were having the conversation of like when you know you know and he would say, when I look at you, I see my wife. So Jeez. joke's on me. Oh. <laughs> we lived together for about a week. But during that week, he literally moved my stuff in, like took his closet down, put my stuff in. We were making plans to go look at other houses, blah, 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 a whole load of bullshit. And yeah, so one day he just came up and was like, I can't. <laughs> I can't do this (laughs) and so yeah I was like he tried to give me a speech and I was like you know what I'm the type of girl where it's like if you pull out and are saying you don't want me I'm not I'm not gonna chase you 
I I got really good at packing during this experience. And so I packed my shit up in 10 minutes. My stuff was still drying. And in England, they don't even have dryers. They have to hang <laughs> their stuff. So I packed my shit up. I was sitting there with sunglasses on waiting for my taxi because he arranged um, an accommodation for me in London. And he started giving me a speech and his eyes were welling up. And I was like, such bullshit in my head. And like, I was shocked at this moment. So I wasn't really feeling my, the heartbreak to come. Right. So I just had my glasses on. I was looking at him and he was starting to tear up. And I was like, okay, my car's here. And so I just left then. Um, I spent some time in London. Um, Jacqueline from the show visited me. And, you know, I just tried to enjoy while I was there as much as I could. And it didn't set in like the pain of it because I was dealing with his, I would say less than respectful behavior uh, while I was in London still. And when I got back, I, you know, I hadn't seen my mom in a really long time and she was picking me up from the airport. And when I landed at LAX, I was going down the escalator and I started to sob, but I like, pulled it together because I was seeing my mom for the first time and I I just wanted to like have a happy moment with her rather than like break down in the airport yeah (laughs) I'll save it when I get home right I was gonna ask if you felt blindsided by the breakup because of the way that he kind of shifted after the show wrapped like did you know something was coming or were you still completely in shock that's what it was completely blindsided and Even like my girlfriends, my castmates, my people who have met him in London, they all are like, you were blind, you've been completely blindsided. But then the show came out and they watched it and they were like, I am so sorry for not giving you the full like love and care that you needed during that time. I had no idea it was like that. So do you feel like looking back at this experience, do you think that Jamie was there to actually find a relationship. Do you think he was there for other reasons or or do you think the feelings were genuine? How do you feel about it now? I think think Jamie was there for money and to try to expand his name to the U.S. and kind of has said things along those lines that have decoded what they truly mean. But I do give some grace in the sense that I think he had a plan to like do the show, get his money and go back to his girlfriend. He had a girlfriend during the show, do you think? I have no clarity. There was a girl before and there was a girl right after. Oh, shit. And I have sources who have confirmed for me. From what I know, he told everybody it was not a dating show. I think he had genuine feelings for me and was fighting a battle of, wait, but I came here just for money and to get out and for fame. And yeah. How did you kind of get through the the heartbreak of this? Because not only is it a breakup and it's heartbreak, but it's also happening publicly, which is a whole nother layer. My two main relationships have been public. It sucks. It's like any heartbreak. It's the worst feeling ever. Um, And I would get annoyed by how much time it was taking for me to get over it. Um, Here's what did it for me. Like what really like cut the cord with him was me learning a lot more about him in his day-to-day life. Mm. Like officially, n- no romance. N- n- Just like habits that's, and stuff like that that's... or character traits. Mm. Character traits, actions that he does, his uh, whereabouts, uh, his behaviors. And that's when I was officially like, and I wish that upon no woman, no matter how much I dislike somebody, yeah. like nobody should be treated that way. Does it also hurt to think that a lot of this may have been a facade? Uh, at first, it hurt a lot that it was a facade. My other ex-boyfriend, we were together for a year and a half and have a lot more history. So that's like a lot harder for me to deal with hearing things about him. And But with Jamie, it was a little different to where... I like I really genuinely thought I found my person and I was very very much like he was my best friend and like 
really fell hard for him. But uh, I uh, started seeing somebody recently where they're not a love bomber. And so it showed me that there are people who don't act like that and don't love bomb. And I'm so used to it. And during it, I was thinking, holy shit, this is going to be a challenge for me. Like, I've been with such toxic people that I think I behave in a toxic way. And so now I'm, I was like, so down for the challenge of like getting rid of all of that, because I don't want to, I don't want to immediately have like trigger responses. I want to feel like secure. And now I got to heal it with someone else or on my own. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's interesting kind of like going from some maybe love bombing type of experiences when you get into a healthy situation, a lot of people find that it can kind of feel a little bit boring or um, somebody described it as kind of lackluster in the beginning because you are so, so used to that yeah. that kind of so, energy, right? I think that you really have to set up a strong foundation with the right person who has the right intentions. Yeah, I would imagine, I think for me, like I'm trying to put myself in this situation. I think for me, if I was was on a show like this, it would be really hard to know what motives people had because, you know, just because you're there for maybe trying to find a genuine connection doesn't mean everybody else is. Was it easy or challenging to kind of figure out who was there for what reasons? Yes and no. I was so in the moment and I was so focused on... um my experience and if I knew that they were footballers maybe I would have thought like are you really here for love yeah not to say that all footballers are are like that it's just like you know now that I know it makes sense what did you learn about yourself through this experience you know whether it was during filming after what what kind of things did that came up for you? I a huge thing for me was uh, not believing that there was someone out there who is a great match for me. Like after coming out of a very like trauma bonded relationship, and although he is not the right person for me, I think Jamie showed me that there are personalities out there that I can I can fall in love again like there is there's more options like it's not just my ex it's not just Jamie he showed me that I don't have to be bored in a relationship that was a big takeaway also just like respect myself Mm. You mentioned that you were excited about being on TV. Where do you think that desire comes from for you to like get excited to uh, be seen in that way? Because a lot of people are terrified of any kind of public speaking, being on media. Where does that come from, do you think? I don't know. To be honest, I was the most shy kid. I like barely spoke. I don't know. I was so shy. I got into middle school, started coming out of my shell. And then I got bullied. So I got thrown right back into my shell. Mm -hmm. And then I would say when I moved to New York in my early 20s, I did not know anybody. It was like a solo mission. And so I kind of had to talk to anyone and everyone. And then that's when my personality started coming out because you can't make friends if you don't talk. So that was kind of a turning point for you. I think in my like almost mid 20s, I got very comfortable with who I am as a person. So yeah, you mentioned like kind of uh, in middle school or you started coming out of your shell and then you were kind of bullied for it. So you kind of went back in your shell. Was there any fear of coming out of your shell again or trying to be more outgoing? Was there any fear around that because of your past experience with kind of being put down for it? In no, that not way? really because I was in such a different time. I was, I used to have a really hard time spending time alone especially when you live alone it's like you kind of have to be out all the time like it's hard to be a homebody uh now I'm much more of a homebody but it's hard to be a homebody in your early 20s living in New York or in LA and so I didn't want to be bored or or get to in my head because I am an overthinker so if I'm left with my own thoughts for too long it's not good I watch shows like for example, let's take sex in the city. And I, I would be like, 
I want to be the one having those experiences, not watching those experiences. There, I feel like you were pretty open on the show during your confessionals and stuff like that, that you enjoy a luxurious lifestyle. Like that's something that you would like in a partner maybe who, you know, can elevate that. What do you say to the people who've been criticizing you for like, maybe things ended with Jamie because he didn't want to spend money on you in a certain way. And that's why things ended. Do you have anything to say about that? Sorry, he's broke. Just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, uh, sorry that other people don't want, a, like, we're all entitled to, I don't want a simple life. And so I'm not going to be like, mm, you suck because you want a simple life. Like, sorry that I, I, I would like to live life to the fullest. And that's, in my book, that is part of it. In yeah. other people's books, that's not part of it. And listen, if I, if relationships were all about money for me, there is a billionaire in Monaco who would marry me in two seconds and I could be living in one of the four villas on the water in Monaco. But it's not like, it's not only about money. Like there has to be love. Right. And do I want, like freedom is a huge thing for me. And so- love traveling. Like, let's say I want to treat my mom to something for everything she's done for me in life. Like, I want the ability to do that. Right. And give her the most amazing experiences because of what she's done for me. I, I, I don't know what to say. Like, sorry, you don't want that life. Like, we agree to disagree. I, there's no need to judge for it. <laughs> right. And like you said, I mean, money just equals options and choices and freedom, right? And it's not like people actually like the physical pieces of paper of money. It's it's the choices and the freedom that comes along with it. So um, what was your favorite part of, of filming the show and least favorite part, if you had to have like a high or and a low? My favorite part was just being able to be my most like I felt so in my element and so free and I had no phone so I was like fully myself on camera loved that yeah. I loved falling in love I love making girlfriends that I'll have for life um and like waking up every day like what are we gonna do today <laughs> what are we gonna do today I can't talk. <laughs> what are we gonna do today guys <laughs> and then just like not know what the day held and it's all planned out for us. I love being driven around. I hate driving in LA. Oh, I just gosh. hate driving. Same. Loved having all of that taken care of for me. Least favorite parts. I caked my face with makeup and that shit did not show. Like it looked <laughs> like I had no makeup on. Somebody I was showing like an interview in the show of me too. They were like, wow, confident, no makeup. I was like, I spent three hours, three hours trying to do camera ready makeup and I could not get it right. My hair was going like not as long and luscious. My, my eyebrows weren't perfect. Like we were going through it during that time. <laughs> but I, as a viewer, I did not notice any of that. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. During that time. Yeah. Not my sexiest self. But <laughs> Also, in like the real life scenes, I didn't mind. I look like me, right? Mostly, but the interview scenes, I was like, that camera angle, that lighting, why? A little bit of like self criticism for some some of your yeah. stuff, yeah. And then yeah. also, least favorite part is like how it ended because I really genuinely thought I found my person. Right. Is there anything that you wish you would have known uh, before starting this experience? Like, what could if you could go back in time and tell, you know, yourself something before going on the show, would you have given yourself any advice? That you are always on camera. Like certain things that you think they might not use, it might be used. Right. Um, right. I think I would go about it in a more to watch out for the love bombing, even though during the show, I'm like, I think you're love bombing me. <laughs> I do. I think I remember you saying something like that. I would turn to Jacqueline and be like, Jacqueline, do you think he's not bombing me? <laughs> Your spidey sense. And he's right getting there. right there. <laughs> so you kind of um, have an awareness like this could not be accurate or this could not be as sincere as maybe. Yeah. And just like advice to others. It's like, yeah, any 
expression you make, like you just have to go in here knowing this, any expression you make, anything you say could be used for something else that has nothing to do with it. But like, yeah. again, we are watching a TV show and I can say wholeheartedly that this one is very, pretty much very true to what happened. Again, speaking for myself. So just being like extra mindful about what you're, that's so hard though, 24 seven, but I can't even imagine. That's why um, I'm like, go into it and be yourself. So what are the next goals for you? Whether it's career, relationship, travel, I mean, anything like that. I am a serial traveler. I haven't traveled in a long, long time. And so I am going nuts, but I believe I'm getting shipped off for my birthday to Greece, which is where this is oh, where my family is. Oh, fun. Um, yeah. And so that's upcoming. I, I would love to check some things off my bucket list travel wise. Um, I definitely, definitely want to get another show. I, I That's like main goal. And in relationship, I would love to find someone who is like patient with me while I work through being in a healthy relationship and is considerate because once I'm in, like when I love you, I'm your biggest cheerleader and I might mess up sometimes. You might mess up sometimes, but as long as we can communicate and talk it through, like that's everything. Mm, yeah. Did you find that this experience or past relationships kind of reflecting on them? What areas do you feel like you need to work on to be your your best version of yourself for your next relationship? Um, I think that I, I'm uber sensitive and reactive to the way that people say something and they might not mean what I think they mean. Mm. Um. Or I have an I have an anxious and avoidant attachment style. It's like the most rare one. Hello. You're a diamond, baby. <laughs> Here I am. Um, and so I think that's important for me to like work on becoming more secure. So I just need to work on trusting, I think. And, you know, having open conversations, which I'm very good at. You know, you've seen, I'll speak my mind easily. Um <laughs> not trying to not try to end it every five seconds because I'm like scared. <laughs> yeah, those are all really good. Okay, final question for you. Um, do you have any favorite quotes or books or other resources that have just helped you throughout your life or career, whether it's for mental or emotional well being or anything like that? Anything that you keep coming back to that you like? I'm going on vacation this weekend and I'm going to read the most powerful woman in the room is you. And so I'm really looking forward to that one. So I'm super excited about that. And oh, I have so many saved in my like Instagram, like quote. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's called captions and quotes. Let's see. Oh, I like this one. Give, but don't let it empty you. So like yes. never change the fact that you're a giver that you love that you like never change anything about yourself just because other people aren't reciprocating if they're em if they are emptying you they are just not the right person to give your energy your love etc to yeah leave enough in the tank for yourself i mean absolutely yeah. leave, leave more than enough right <laughs> make space and shift to a person who deserves it. Exactly. Or like buy another tank, right? Have a couple tanks going on. Um, okay. One one more question. I lied, Renee. Do you have a least favorite quote that you just hate that you wish would just go away? Um, okay, so I know I know a rapper and I was at a soccer game with him and he was acting so weird. And so a few days later I was like, Why were you acting so weird at the game? And he goes, this is my least favorite quote, weird. You're lucky I even noticed yet. <laughs> Great comeback. Least favorite quote. <laughs> that could be your go-to response. You're lucky I even noticed yet. Perfect. Solid quote. <laughs> Solid really quote, intelligent guys. one. Get the, get the tattoo on your arm. That's the quote of the day. Weird. You're lucky I even noticed yet. <laughs> exactly. Down my arm. That's perfect. Put it, frame it, put it above your desk. Get a post-it note, put it on your fridge. Oh, affirmations. Th thank you to that guy. Exactly. For the best affirmation you could ever have. Um, 
do you have any kind of final words of wisdom for anybody who might be either going through a breakup or maybe they have, they feel like they have too much visibility around something, anything like that. And then of course, where, where can people find you and, and all that good stuff? Yes. Advice. Um, do what you need to do. Nothing lasts forever. So if you need to step away from your social media, from your friends, from just life, like give yourself that space. I think American culture and like working here in a corporate America does not allow people to be people. So if you have to take those sick days or those like vacation days to do it, just freaking do it because you got to feel your feelings for them to leave your body. Talk about it. I'm so lucky that I have girlfriends where we can talk about the same thing over and over and over again until we are done with it. Um, In regards to like what we're going through, I think it's just so important to have a few people that you trust. Therapy, great option. If you're ever down, just like turn your phone off and go do something that makes you feel good. And the more you do that, the better you'll feel. Like for me, that is dance. And so I was like, you know what? I'm freaking out in my head. I'm just going to go take a dance class. And so went in there, came out, energy on a whole different level. And so when you do the things that make you feel good, you feel good about yourself and then you bring more good to yourself. So like feeling your feelings, doing stuff that makes you feel good, talking about it, making sure you have a few people that you trust in your life to talk about it with or to talk about it over and over and over with and like just give yourself grace. Love it. And then where can people find you and your work and all that good stuff? You can find me on Peacock's Love Undercover yes. and on Instagram <laughs> and TikTok at Renee period Ash. Perfect. Renee, thanks so much. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed our chat. Thank you. Same. This was fun. I appreciate you. All right, everyone. Wasn't that fun? to it scratch some itches for you. Um, just a little bit of an announcement. We are about to do some voting on our Patreon platform for some new topics that we'll be discussing soon. So if you want to be a part of that, you can find the info at patreon.com slash self helpless. I think there's like a free seven day trial or even a month free trial or something like that. Anyway, basically you could participate in the voting for free if you want and then leave. I guess. So totally up to you. We do appreciate all the support for the podcast, including, you know, our patrons, people who get merch, share their favorite episodes on social media. Those of you who write in with really kind emails about how the podcast has helped you in some way. So thank you all so much. The show quite literally could not keep going without you. And yeah, that's it for today. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for tuning in to Self Helpless. You can find our brand new merch, Patreon community, and other fun goodies at selflesspodcast.com. We'd be thrilled if you left an Apple podcast review, shared this episode with a friend, or post about it on Instagram and tag us at selfhelplesspodcast so we could repost you and say hi. As an independently produced show, we sincerely appreciate your support. Thanks, everybody.